So viewing this one step further here, if we want to kind of think about this a little more abstractly, what we just what we just saw happen was that we began with a magnetic field. So in the prime frame, even if we didn't know what was up there, we knew that there was a magnetic field that was present at all points in space. And, and you could draw the, you know, the mathematical law, how it works. It, it drops off as one over R from that wire, if you knew it was there. But we had a magnetic field, which resulted in a magnetic force. Now, we transform reference frames into S prime. What we now see about space-time, even if we can't now view a wire, so let's say that wire was shielded behind a curtain, but you're flying through that space-time now, and you have an electric and a magnetic field measuring device, which, I mean, they easily exist, like we have plenty of them in labs. Um, you can, by the way, they're called charged particles. <laughs> you have a charged particle, you see whether it moves. That's literally how you test fields. Um, so, so if you have a way to determine the electric and the magnetic fields, in your area of space as you fly through that area, uh, area of space. You now say that you have a electric field present. And specifically in transforming from S to S prime, what we're actually doing, and this is kind of crazy, we are also in turn transforming a magnetic field into an electric field. Isn't that kind of cool? Because th there's precisely no way to gauge you know, that, that what your view is an electric field, um, you know, was any different than those other frames. That, that basically, this is your reality there, and it's no more correct than this guy's reality, but they're two very different ways of perceiving and predicting how, how motion will change. And so this is really important, because effectively, as we do our, what we call a relativistic boost, that, that's the proper term, as we transform into a moving inertial system, as we boost frames, you also can turn electric fields into magnetic fields and reverse. This is an example of what we call a gauge theory. It's a theory that you can relate different reference frames using, basically it's kind of like, you know, turning a dial. And, and that's, that's very much similar to exactly how some of the most fundamental theories of particle physics work. That what we, our, our basic theory of particle physics now is, is based on what we call gauge theories. That as you turn a dial, what is viewed one way in the universe as an electric field, for example, as you turn that dial, you just turn the perspective into a magnetic field. And you, you can go even further. If I was to have chosen a, a co-moving frame that only went half the velocity. So here's kind of a fun thing. So let's say we're now no, no longer moving along with that particle. That particle still has a little bit of velocity to the left. What happens now is that if you actually have a particle that's moving, but you have shifted frames, there will be a little bit of length contraction and, and expansion. So the, this wire will obtain a little bit of a charge, not as much as if you're moving faster. So the wire obtains a little bit of charge, and you have a little bit of velocity, and you have a little bit of electric pull and magnetic force. So in this case, we haven't transformed far enough, so we've turned what was previously a magnetic field into a combination of electric and magnetic fields. Here's how you can actually mathematically write this up. Uh, and this is, this is just a, a bit of a model here. Um, there, to be proper, you need to include one more component, and I'm not going to do that here. But you can think of there literally just as being a rotation matrix. That if you start with some B at a position X in space-time, and E at a position x in space-time, based on your velocity, you can have a rotation matrix where you can have, cos for example, cosine of beta. Now, now I've, I've chosen beta intentionally there, but that, might, that may not necessarily be precisely the same V over C that we're used to. It might be some, some fraction of it. But the whole point is, we are now applying a rotation matrix here. And if you do the proper analysis, let's say you start with one of these at zero. You start with no electric field here. When you now transform that, you get the result, which I don't have room to write it here. But the result now becomes, uh, actually I will write it here. 
um, we have b prime at x prime, e prime at x prime, where those are the, the transform coordinates as well. Of course, you have to transform coordinates if you're doing a transformation. But we are literally rotating electric fields and magnetic fields into one another. And, you know, there's these, uh, it works in literally a sinusoidal fashion, and you, if, if you dial a gauge properly, you can, flip the, you can flip the dial exactly, you know, a quarter rotation. You can then flip it a full rotation, and you can turn it back into the other. So this is, I, I think, one of the craziest aspects of relativity. If you, if you allow for time and space to be transformed into one another, you're also allowing for the fields that are based on time and space to do the same. And so, so isn't this kind of a cool way to view this? Comments, questions, Michael? Um, so that, so the physics two equation that we formula that we learned for the Lorentz, uh, trans not the transformation, but the Lorentz force. force yeah. So that was, I, I, I had no idea that that was going to be applied in like this way. Like yeah. you could always just assume that there's still the electric force component. It just sometimes equals zero in those formulas is cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so, it was, it still kind of blows my mind that that's actually like physical, the, the physical reality that, you know, there's no way to distinguish that it's from just a transformation, that it actually is just a reality to you. Oh, yeah. I, I can pretty much pinpoint when I became a coffee addict, and it was, I think, about, uh, uh, fall semester my sophomore year, I was taking my first like you know real hardcore math classes, and um, uh, there were, it was about an all nighter a week spent you know with some classmates of mine at the coffee shop, like just working all night and doing proofs and stuff. And it was you know we'd each have three or four coffees through the night, and I think <laughs> I haven't turned back since. Oh yeah, I uh, I would also describe myself as a coffee addict. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it if you need to be productive and want to sleep, <laughs> it's a good solution. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so let's see. We um... hey, remind me what was the second thing I our itinerary today? I forget. Oh, relativistic rel mass and, and energy. Uh, that's right. And I actually had kind of a uh, reminder sheet here. Yeah, cool. Thank <laughs> you.